Let's start this. All right, let's look at um, the motion of an inclined plane, including the concept of friction. The concept of friction. Um, definition first, please. Take down. Let's consider friction a bit. Think of it. Recall that friction is a force that opposes the relative motion of a body. Recall that friction is a force that opposes the relative motion of a body. Full stop. And hence acts in the opposite direction and hence acts in the opposite direction of the motion of the body and hence acts in the opposite direction of the motion of the body Next up, coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is represented by the Greek symbol mu. The coefficient of friction is represented by the Greek symbol mu. It is the ratio of the frictional force acting on a body to the normal reaction of the body. It is the ratio of the frictional force acting on a body to the normal reaction on the body. We are saying that is mu is equal to frictional force all over normal reaction. Uh, so I'm saying mu is equal to uh, just the pressure frictional force and calling frictional force F of F so frictional force all over normal reaction F so it knows that mu is equal to F F that's frictional force all over N that's um, normal reaction rate. now please look at this frictional force is a force so it's measured in Newton also normal reaction is a kind of force also measured in Newton so the idea is this, frictional force is in Newton all over, normal reaction is also in Newton. So in this case now, Newton cancels Newton. That means coefficient of frictional force does not have an SI unit. It's a dimensionless constant. Or let's not say constant though. It's a dimensionless quantity per se. It has no SI unit. Alright, so note this. Um, okay, so what next? So look at this. Next up is, in our previous class yesterday, we said something. We said for a body on an inclined plane, that's this. We said it had normal reaction this way, then we have this. And we said this one here is equal to this. I draw the equilibrium. Upward force equal to downward force. So from this diagram here, we can make this assumption. Perhaps let's call, let's call who? being equal to FF all over N. Let's call this our first equation. We are saying that from this concept here, upward force is equal to downward force. Concept of the equilibrium. That means, that is, the normal reaction is equal to what's down there. That becomes Mg cos theta. Please, this is for a case of a body on an inclined plane. All right. Let's call this 
a second equation. If I put, if I put uh, equation two into equation one, if I put this here, I will have that coefficient of friction move is equal to frictional force all over this is this value to becomes mg cos theta. So I have this. So perhaps this is of course over one on cross multiplying. This and this, I have that frictional force times one. Which is frictional force is equal to this and this. That gives you mu mg cos theta. This is a very important expression. That frictional force is equal to mass times gravity times cos theta. Please note this bit. Frictional force is equal to uh, coefficient of friction times mass times gravity cos theta. Very important. Alright, look up it. Next up, look up it. Next up, let's get an expression for the acceleration of a body moving in an inclined plane. Now listen up it. Look at this for different cases. Well, let's start with a very simple case, having just one mass. Right. So what's the expression for the acceleration of a single mass going down an inclined plane? What do you have? So look up it. Look up it. Um, First of all, draw your word there. Free body yeah. diagram. Now listen to me. I made sure I said when it comes to a moving body, we don't regularly consider uh, normal reaction in this one. Just the uh, forces responsible for its motion. Now, if the body is moving down this way, yeah? now listen. In this case, now we are considering friction. So if you are considering frictional force now, the next question will now be where would the frictional force act? From our definition, we say it acts more there in the opposite direction of what the motion of the body. Now look at this case. Let's say I have a body of mass sliding down this way. If I'm to include friction here, in what direction will friction act? If this is going down here, friction will act where? The opposite direction. So it becomes F, F. So I have frictional force acting this way. In this case now, observe that the direction of motion of this body is downward like this. So having this. Alright, so let's get out um, free body diagram. What? Let's get out free body diagram. So I'm having this mass here. Yeah? Mass M. I have mass M here. Yeah? Such that the force pushing this downward is mg sine theta. I have this as mg sine theta. The force pushing this one upwards is this, your frictional force. So I have, going upwards here, I have frictional force. That's this. Next up, look out for the direction of motion. It's going down this way. That's in the same direction as this one here. So that means this body is sliding downwards like this. Now recall we said yesterday we said that the force is equal to mass times acceleration from Newton's second law. And we said for a conglomerate of forces that many forces act together, we said the sum of forces is equal to MA. Alright, for this case now let's get sum of forces. So we said how get sum of forces is as easy as if the force is going in that direction, it becomes what there? Positive. Opposite becomes what there? Negative. So for this case here, yeah, this one is going in this direction. So it becomes positive. So I'm having mg sine theta. The frictional force is going in the opposite direction. So it becomes what there? Negative. So it becomes minus frictional force. So I'm having this. Um, if I choose to impute uh, values, from here, we said frictional force is equal to mu mg 
equals theta. So it means the sum of forces is equal to, I'm having this as mg sin theta minus increased friction force, it becomes this, that becomes mu mg cos theta. So I have this as the sum of forces. Uh, depends on how you want to talk about this now. If I choose to factorize mg, if I choose to factorize mg, I'll have that the sum of forces is equal to bring down mg here, it becomes mg. If I put out mg here, I'm left with what there? Sin theta. So I'm having sin theta minus, take out mg here, the left word there, mu cos theta. So I have mu cos theta. Alright, so I have this as the sum of forces. That mg multiplying sin theta minus mu cos theta. Alright, so what we saw now, but we said sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So it means that, but we said sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. In cube value, this one here, sum of forces, is what we have here as mg. So I have that mg into sin theta sin theta minus mu cos theta so this sum of forces is equal to mg mathematically speaking if I have the same um, parameter on both left hand and right hand they can cancel out so from here it means that I'm having mass here and mass here so this can cancel this hence the acceleration of a body on an inclined plane is then equal to this one here. Yeah? You can say, first of all, sin theta minus this one here, yeah? mu cos theta times one here, yeah? gravity. So I have this as um, the expression for the acceleration of a body moving um, down an inclined plane. You have this. So please note this formula, please. Very important formula. Alright. Let's use this in some of it. Alright, so let's take an example on this. Take down this. It said Calculate the time and velocity with which an object of mass 200 kg slides from rest down, a, down at 60 degrees incline of length 50 meters, starting from the top, full stop. If the coefficient of friction is 0.35, um, so let's g be equal to what there? 9.8 meters. Per second square. So solution is as usual, your first task is to list out given parameters. Please, what am I giving them? What's the given there? I'm giving mass n how many? 200 kilogram. What's next there? Theta. Number two, I'm giving the angle. That's theta. How many? 60 degrees. What's next there? Eh? But three, I'm giving length. Uh, let's say uh, the distance. Now look at this. Look up. I'm giving length and I'm taking length as distance. Why? Because the length you're giving there is what? The length of the incline from here to this point. So it becomes the distance of the motion of this body. That's why I converted length to distance. How many degrees? 50 meters. What's that again? Okay, so my phone, I'm giving move. How many? 
0.35. Is that all? G. Uh, give me G there. Eh? Gravity. How many there? 9.8 meters per second squared. 9 for what? What is this value now? Alright. So look at this. Look at this. That is 2 or 3 pi. Look at 3 pi. Alright. Let's get this done. Please. What's supposed to ask to find this? What's supposed to ask to find? Find what? Find time and find velocity. Now look at this. Listen. We have to find the time and velocity. So look at this. Um, for this concept, we'll go back to our equations of motion. Of course, you have V being equal to U plus AT, uh, V squared being equal to U squared plus 2AS, S equal to UT plus half AT squared, then S equal to U plus V over 2 times T. Your three basic equations of kinematics of motion, and then the fourth one. Now, you have to find velocity and distance. And what? Time, right? Alright. Mark to find velocity or time. If I look at my two possible expressions for velocity, that's this one and this one here. Yeah? Well, excluding this one. My two possible expressions for velocity, this and this, they require a value of what? Acceleration. So in this one here, yeah, this is acceleration here. Yeah? In this one here, yeah, there is acceleration. So we can't find velocity without acceleration. Hence, for this question there, my first task to do there, look for acceleration. All right. The acceleration, the acceleration of the body would be, so we said, guess your expression, A is equal to now look at this. Perhaps, let me switch it, okay? Let me bring G first. Well, we talk about the same thing. So it becomes G into sine theta minus mu cos theta. In fifth value, this is equal to G is 9.8 into sine theta is about 60. So sine 60 minus mu. Mu is 0.35. 0.35 cos theta. Theta is 60 degrees, so I have this. Alright, in this value, this is equal to 9.8. So, this gives me sine 60 minus 0.35 cos 60. What's the value? If I punch all of this, what do you get?
divide this together. I have this one here. I have this. I don't have this. I don't have this. You can't be using two of those at the same time. So first of all, find a value for what there? Value is the How do I find that? And I use this one here. Of course, this is zero. So it goes up. Two. A is this value. X is only given. So first of all, use this first. Find what there? Value is Alright, so using, using the equation that v squared is equal to u squared plus 2ax in fifth value, I have that final velocity is equal to, this is 0, since the body starts from rest. So it becomes 0 squared plus 2 into a. What's a there? This 6.77 times x. What's x there? That one there, 50 meters, so I have 50. So it becomes v squared is equal to, this gives you 0 plus, what do you have here? 67. 67, right? No, 677. 677. Yeah. Alright. So v squared is equal to what there? 677. Because oh, this plus 0 is itself. Let's get v. To get v, simply take square root. Square root of 6, 7, 7. Please give it back. 26 points. 0, 2 meters per second. That's going to be 26.02 meters per second. To so found the velocity as required. Finally, let's get time. For time, for time t, so recall the equation. Recall that we said v is equal to u plus a t. We now have one, two, and three. Let's find t. All right, in print values, so we have that from here, uh, v, which is this. So I have that. 26.02 v is equal to u u is 0 plus a a is 6.77 times t from here you have 26.02 is equal to 6.77 t divided by 6.77 divided by 6.77 of course this comes to this, you have that C, 9 is equal to what you get here? Sorry? 8 for unit. Alright, so this becomes a time. So, therefore, after solving, acceleration is 6.77 meters per second squared. Velocity is equal to. 26.02 meters per second and finally time is equal to 3.84 seconds so I have this as the answer so this is how you solve this question That's it.